Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, it's often said that in today's business world, hard skills will get you the job, but it's your soft skills that'll help you keep it. And today, we look at both with our focus on Oklahoma's workforce. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by CareerTech, a job for every Oklahoman and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. I'm Rob McClendon. Well, a strong workforce is the cornerstone of every community and its economy. But finding the right people for the right jobs can be a challenge, depending upon the position. Research shows a mishire can cost a company anywhere between five to 27 times what that person's base salary would have been. But such a dilemma is often avoidable. Blaine Singletary shows us how. Rob, it's all part of a program called Work Keys, and to put it simply, it gives employers a clear, itemized look at what strengths and weaknesses a prospective hire has. We ventured out to Ottawa County in the northeast corner of Oklahoma to see how it's reinventing the workforce. It's business as usual at Scepter USA in Miami. Scepter is a manufacturer of plastic portable fuel containers i.e. your red gas cans, primarily. That's Miriam George, Director of Human Resources for Scepter. They're still a fairly young company, having opened back in 2012, but they've enjoyed a tremendous amount of growth and success. And in George's words, that's come down to hiring the right people, thanks to a special program. There was a representative through the career tech that spoke to us about the advantages of having your jobs, your positions, profiled and then utilizing a testing mechanism which is your career readiness testing in your hiring process so that you can pre-select people with a uh, suitable skill set for the roles. And that testing mechanism is what's known as work keys. Think of it as a standardized test as the same people who make the ACT test are behind this one. But instead of college readiness, this one is all about workforce readiness. Susan Kuzmik of Career Tech explains. The Work Keys test will show an employer the skill levels that a job seeker currently has, how they can perform on their job. And once they've completed the test, they get a certificate that grades them on three core areas, applied mathematics, reading for information, and locating information. And these areas are necessary in over 85% of the jobs across the United States today. With job applicant strengths and weaknesses itemized, companies like Scepter are able to make more informed hiring decisions. Miriam George says it's also helped them find out what their company is all about and exactly what each part of it does. And because we were a startup company, the process helps you develop such an exhaustive task list that we would have, I mean, never come up with something this extensive on our own. And I'll, I'll just show you one. George right showed here. us a list of 62 items, the task list for just one of the positions here. And that packet of papers has uses outside of being a work piece component. This can then become a component for training. We know we have to train on each and every one of these items. It can also be used early on for interview type questions. Working with career tech, Sevder produced job profile reports for key positions like maintenance technician, production operator, and QA lab technician. With all these benefits, you'd think businesses would be chomping at the bit to get work keys working for them, right? Well, Susan Kuzmik says they're off to a good start, but could always use more participation. We have over 125,000 career readiness certificates in Oklahoma, and we have probably around 100 employers that are utilizing, either recognizing or requesting 
the Career Readiness Certificate. And one way to do that is by getting cities, towns, and counties to become work-ready communities. Ottawa County, where SEPTA is located, is working to become one of them. By meeting ACT's criteria and setting some of their own goals, they have the chance to be nationally recognized, and business owners will take notice. Businesses will be looking to locate because they, they see the value of the credentialed job seekers in that area. These work-ready communities bring elected officials, businesses, and educators together with the simple goal of advancing their workforce. And the more of the state that gets on board, the greater the benefits will be. That community will engage their employers, drive the certificate, improve the quality of life for their citizens, and bring in those high-skill, high-wage jobs. It's all about working together, and in the long run, growing together. Again, Miriam George. As we try to recruit and develop more industry, more jobs into our county, companies are going to notice that you've got the tools in place here to help get a qualified workplace. At this point, pending their final approval, Ottawa County would be the only work-ready community in the state, but Susan Kuzmick told me it won't take much for other counties, regions, or even the whole state to begin the process of growing a stronger, smarter workforce. All right, thank you so much, Blaine. Now, when we return, a look at another community's approach to creating jobs. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon with Rob McClendon. Weekly insight into your changing world. Well, if you're a regular viewer here on Horizon, you may remember the show we broadcast from Shawnee, Oklahoma. And while we were there, I visited the Shawnee Economic Development Foundation where I found this poster on the wall. How do we tell little Johnny and Susie and Maud, Oklahoma or, or Shawnee or somewhere else that the, 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 the education they're receiving in their classroom has a direct correlation to what the employers need in the community, in the area. And at the same time, how do we help that educator who, who may be struggling somewhat to, to provide the relevancy of a math or science project back to those, those students at the same time? So what we developed was what we call a skills poster that lists the majority of the manufacturers in the area, gives an opportunity for the educator or the student to do some research on what that company does, tells them the product that they make, has the opportunity to contact that company to see if they can have a, a facility tour by, the, by some of the, the students, and then also lists the skills that a company prefers to see their, their people walk in the door with. So in, in, in any case, one of the students says all he wants to do is build motorcycles. Well, if he'll come over and look at a company, he's going to see that measuring skills and mathematics and knowledge of basic math and science are critical to, to his ability to fulfill his d dream and his desire of building motorcycles. So it's not punishment. The math, the science, uh, the engineering disciplines, the STEM work that we all talk about, it's not punishment in the classroom. It's the tools that he needs to have to be able to fulfill his dreams down, down the road. And so we've, we've put this out in an in a almost 10 county area around the community to help those educators express that to the students. Mm -hmm. And just looking at some of the skills needed, many of them are the same from industry to industry. Absolutely. Have to be able to solve problems, have to be able to do basic math, have com basic computer skills. And the list goes on and on. And again, it's, it's the language of business that's taught in our classrooms and we need to reinforce that as much as we can. Yeah, and I, I, I can't help but notice the lower left hand corner, basic soft skills required for every position. A a absolutely. Uh, uh, again, Distinguishing hard skills from soft skills and entry level skills and advanced skills. This is just the entry stuff. If you if you can if you can corral this, if you can practice these ideas, sky's the limit. Now earlier in studio, I visited with Tim Burke, who you just met, Chuck Mills, the former state chamber president and chairman of Mills Machine Company, and Marty Lewis, a longtime educator in both common education and with career tech. Now I want to hear each of your perspective on the importance of workforce to your community. And I really want to start off with the man that does the hiring and that would be Chuck Mills. Well, obviously workforce is important. Uh, we can't operate machinery and you know, help our customers unless we've got qualified skilled workers. Uh, and, it, and it's changed a lot. Uh, my company was founded in 1908. So we're a 108 year old company that continues to have to reinvent itself continually which means that we've got to uh, have 
people that understand the technology differences. We're competing globally now. And uh, even though we're an old line company, we have to continue to uh, embrace the technology and, and uh, it takes people to do that. Unfortunately, uh, you know, there's been a big push for our kids just to go to college. And a lot of them don't go to college or they go and they don't complete their college. And, um, you know, we need to encourage people to, uh, uh, that there is a good skill uh, and a good wage to be uh, learned in, uh, in manufacturing or construction or a lot of other uh, type of businesses that don't require a college degree. They do require some certification. Uh, but things have changed uh, and the work ethic has changed, obviously. We have uh, uh, different generations that have lost that pride in workmanship. Um, I heard the other day that the word curiosity, that they have lost curiosity, uh, any curiosity of finding anything. Because you think about it, any answer they want is right on their phone. They can just Google it. And so they're not thinking like they were. They don't problem solve like they were. Uh, so it, it's a problem for us. And there's nothing worse than going out for a business owner, going out uh, earning good business, giving good customer service, building a good reputation, and then having to turn that business away because you don't have qualified workers to do the job. It, it'll kill your soul. Marty, I really want to get your reaction to what Chuck just said, not only about the training, but how it's ever evolving. I think that's, that's uh, maybe not a difficulty for education, but that's one of the things that's somewhat exciting about education is that we have the opportunity to try to evolve along with business and industry. We, we very much pride ourselves at Gordon Cooper Technology Center and, and within the career tech system that uh, we do shift on the fly as we need to with new technologies, uh, new forms of innovation, et cetera. Uh, it's, uh, both exciting and kind of frustrating at times because it is difficult to keep up with those kinds of things. Uh, but uh, I, I understand, you know, Chuck's thoughts, uh, and, and I would agree with them uh, very much so. Uh, I think the challenge is for us to understand that everything we do uh, in one way or another uh, connects to the workforce. Um, it would be my hope that eventually we we uh, kind of stop talking about college and career ready and understand that everything that goes on in some way, shape, or form connects to careers. In my world of education and training, uh, I, I truly do understand um, how critically important workforce development is because Chuck hit the nail on the head. If I've got local companies or we've got companies in this state that cannot find the workforce, it will not matter the tax incentives it will not matter the infrastructure, it will not matter the quality of life, they're not gonna come here unless they can be assured that they're gonna have workers to make the kinds of products and services that they want to do uh, uh, within the state of Oklahoma. It's, yeah. it's of critical importance. Yeah, and in, in changing those attitudes, that really even extends past the career tech or before the career tech, back to the common ed? It, it does. They are setting the seeds both academically and from a work ethic standpoint that will eventually contribute to the workforce. Uh, many times when I'm speaking publicly, I will talk about the fact when everything is said and done, almost all people will have to get a J-O-B. And so even though a kindergarten teacher or a first grade teacher or even a college professor in a uh, social science area may not view their role as developing a workforce, they are having an effect, and many times a very positive effect, on people that will enter the workforce. And so by virtue of that, they are very much in workforce development. And I would really hope that we would embrace that notion throughout all levels of education and training and understand workforce in a much broader sense than simply preparing someone for a job. It's much more uh, important and much more involved than simply that. Yeah, and you know, I, I guess I should say this here. Uh, this is a challenge that we're all facing across the state, across the country. And in, and in many ways, Pottawatomie County, Shawnee, is handling it very well. We talked about the poster there on the wall. And I know that you 
bill your area as a train to suit area, Tim. Yes, sir. It, you know, back to the, the conversation about skilled uh, employees. Without skilled employees, nothing else matters. Uh, people ha all over the United States have land, they have available buildings, or they'll build a building, they have different finance programs, they have all kinds of different incentives and resources that they can offer a business to expand, to relocate, to, to grow, to do whatever. But without a skilled uh, workforce, nothing else matters. Now, you and I had the conversation about suit to train, and the, the great thing about the state of Oklahoma and, and what I think is the best in the nation is the career tech system, and I'm highly biased with that. But, but we're talking about something that a company from, from uh, uh, overseas can come to Pottawatomie County and talk about locating a manufacturing facility, and we may not have a skilled workforce in, that, in the community at that point in time that can do the work that they want done. However, we can sit down with Mr. Lewis and his staff, and literally, he can turn on a dime and provide the skills employee training that that company will need. And I don't think there's a lot of other places in the United States, even maybe even the world a little bit, that can do that. So we, we've got a suit to train based upon what the company's needs are. Horizon is at your fingertips. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to catch the segments you may have missed and our latest new content as it happens. Make no mistake, today's manufacturing is not your grandfather's manufacturing. The devices employed in machine shops like Mills Machines are as expensive as they are impressive and they continue to evolve. In our continuing conversation, I asked Chuck Mills how we keep up in business and in education. I, I've been in your facility, I've been in your facility, and the machines I see in both of them aren't cheap. How do you do that? How do you, how do you afford to do that? How do you afford not to do it? I, I'll, I'll give you an example. We provide a standard line of drilling tools and bits. Shallow drilling, not really a long drill, so, uh, But we still offer custom manufacturing so we can continue to solve problems, special problems, in drilling. But we have to have kind of both. Well, when we made the move from the manual equipment to the CNC equipment, so it's all computerized, uh, it's expensive and it's painful especially when you compare the price. But here's, here's what, the, what happened. Talking about the workforce shortage issue that we have, we determined that one machine would do what four people and four machine would do manually. So it's like, okay, we can't get workers, so we're gonna have to have equipment, unfortunately, to replace those workers. Uh, but it also increases our productivity, efficiency, and competitiveness. So when you take also in build cells where you've got one person in the middle of two or three machines, now that one person with their benefits and that overhead can now produce what virtually 12 people would. Now that's huge. Advanced manufacturing. And that, that's where we start being competitive with the rest of the world. And, and Tim, I've heard you call them, not blue collar jobs, but... Gold collar jobs. You know, the people that understand how to analyze that piece of equipment, whether it's operating correctly, how to program it, how to, how to do the diagnostic uh, 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 review of it. How is it, is it performing at its efficiency? If there's something wrong, what is it that's wrong with it? Whether it's hydraulics or electronics or whatever it may be, somebody that knows how to do that, they're in short supply and they're not quite, quite uh, name their price in the industry, but they're pretty close to it. And we have a huge shortage in the world of individuals like that. But again, I like our chances of producing more of them, specifically because of what our career tech system can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know that technology is helping us in some ways. We know that training is certainly helping us in some ways. What are some of the other answers when we talk about developing workforce here in the state? I, I'm, I'm, again, very opinionated, as you very well know. I think we have to do a better job of explaining what wealth generation in employment is. And I think we have to talk to not only little Johnny and Susie in, in Oklahoma, we need to talk to little Johnny and Susie's parents about what that means as well. Let's start talking to them about wealth generating jobs and where they can go if they pursue a certificate from a career tech. That can also lead to higher education at the same time. I think we've got to, to also do, and this blends quite well with what Tim just said, I think we've really got to uh, do a better job of, of career counseling people. I'm not advocating 
uh, some European methodology of education here where we, where we sort and, 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 track people. And, and, and track people. What I'm advocating is we want parents and kids to be exposed to the many opportunities that kids have. Uh, and I think the younger they're exposed to those many opportunities, the better off they're going to be, the better decision they're going to make. Uh, I think one of the things that we've done in the United States is that we have, uh, there's this rite of passage that when you become 18 years of age, that you immediately matriculate in this pathway. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure everyone is ready intellectually, emotionally, socially, to matriculate that way. And so uh, it, it, there's a lot of aspects to it, but I, I do believe that we've got to help more people understand a lot of different options and really do quality career counseling. I think the parent aspect is so important here because I don't know how many times I've had friends apologize to me when they're telling me what their child is doing if they're not going on to get that four-year degree or their master's or anything like that. And many times these same parents after the, the young person's graduated with a degree they can't really market themselves with. <laughs> but Rob, the, the career tech system offers marketable and transferable skills. That's what's so important. And, and I agree with Marty 100%. Let's, let's talk about K-20. Let's not talk K-12 and career tech and higher ed. Let's talk about systemic, continued, lifelong uh, education, because that, that's important. But if you're creating marketable and transferable skills and you have a downturn in the energy business, which heaven knows in Oklahoma, we've seen enough of those. If you have those marketable and transferable skills, you can immediately transcend into another type of a, a of a career or employment and, you, and, and your livelihood continues. And it may not be at the same level of income, but you're not destitute because all you know is one specific thing. And again, the marketable and transferable skills is so critical. And, and we have the opportunity in this state to lead the rest of the nation to do that. We can do that better and faster and, and cheaper, quite frankly, than anybody else in the United States. Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen, thanks so much. Want to see more stories like this? All our segments are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Now as I spoke with these community leaders from Shawnee, one subject kept coming up, the need for career guidance tools both for younger students and for adults. Because as Marty Lewis says, what you don't know, you don't know. Now one such tool can be found at okcareerguide.org and Chuck Mills tells us more. OKCareerGuide.org uh, rolled out last year and it now has almost 56,000 registered, registered people in it, uh, in this program. It has an assessments pe assessment piece, it has career exploration, you can look at careers and see what they pay, what the education requirements are. There's a business piece in here that uh, businesses can post jobs, people can look for jobs, it right now is sixth grade through adult. So adults and, and sixth graders on up can explore and, and see what, what they might want to do or be. There's a kindergarten to fifth grade piece that's being done now that's not available yet. So we'll be able to start earlier and that, you know, and you just make it fun and games. I mean, education should be fun. Every child should have an opportunity to go to their job every day and like what they do and get paid for it. It doesn't get any better than that. You know, imagine, and a lot of people don't think that. They're like, well, where's the money? Here's the money, but are you happy? You know, are you go to the job and you're miserable every day and you're thinking, man, I'm making a lot of money, but I am miserable here. There's no reason to be like that. You can make good money doing things that you like to do where you'll say, oh my gosh, they're paying me to be here and do this? I'd almost do this for free. That's what every child should have an opportunity for, and that's what we hope we can do. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, with this year's presidential race heating up, we look back at the man who first held that office and the lessons we can learn. Washington's goodness is determined by what he did as Commander-in-Chief President of the Constitutional Convention, and as our first president. The life of George Washington on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. 
thanks for including us as part of your day. I'm Rob McClendon. Hope to see you back here next week. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's Career Tech provides nationally recognized technical education. Career Tech elevates the economy, helping Oklahomans get great jobs. Career Tech connects thousands of qualified graduates with thriving Oklahoma businesses. Career Tech also gives Oklahoma companies training and services that help them become even more profitable. Oklahoma's Career Tech a job for every Oklahoman, and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry.